Hey, Mike Simmons here, and in this video, I'm going to show you proper WordPress website setup to help increase your ranking factors on Google. Proper WordPress website setup means you're going to need to plan your site out. And to plan your site out means you're going to have to do keyword research and content planning. There are on-page and off-page factors for ranking your site on Google. Off-page factors are mainly backlinks. But it also includes social sharing nowadays, like Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and that sort of thing. But we are mainly going to talk about on-page factors, like internal linking and siloing your site's content. That means setting up and structuring your site content properly to maximize the on-page factors. Here's an overview. It's a very good idea to plan your site's content before you start. You'll need to have a main topic, what your website will be about, and you don't want your main topic to be too general. You want to narrow it down somewhat. So say, for instance, if you were going to make a website about dogs, you would probably want to narrow that down because dogs is a very, very big category and very broad, so it's best to narrow something like that down. We are going to make what is called, or what I call anyway, a 6 plus 5 plus 5 website. That means having 6 pages, which is our main topic page, our home page, and 5 related topic pages. And these related topics have to be very related to this main topic. This will be our silo. That's our top of our silo, and then underneath our silo we have our related topic pages. We're going to have 5 blog categories, which are similar to these related topic pages. Then in each blog category, we're going to have five initial blog posts. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of content, and for many small businesses, coming up with that much to start with is probably a lot. You could start off, of course, with just a couple pages underneath your main topic page and a couple blog categories, a couple blog posts. But down the road, you need to shoot for having at least five related topic pages. Here is a visual about what I'm talking about. We have our home page, our main topic, which is Heating Seattle in our case, our hub page. Then underneath our silo is our related topic pages. We have water heaters, Seattle furnaces, Seattle heat pumps, Seattle, Seattle air conditioning, Seattle boiler service. Now, of course, you can have more than five pages, but make sure that they are tightly related, tightly themed to your main topic, your main silo. We're also going to have five blog categories, which are very similar to our related topics and in each blog category we're going to have one initial blog post and of course you can obviously have more than one blog post in each category and you probably would want to do so down the road in the content of our home hub page we're going to have links to all these important related pages on our site and in the content of these related topic pages we're going to have links to our home page and then also in a natural helpful way we're going to have links in the content to some of these other related topic pages now you don't want to link to other pages that are not in this if you had a different silo on your site rather than heating seattle you wouldn't want to link to that so you want to make sure that they're all within your silo now, in our content of our blog post we're just going to link to our similar related topic page. We're not going to link to other related topic pages. Just to the related topic which will be about the same as the blog category that the blog post is in. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about a little later on in the video so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about here. As far as doing keyword research, Google gives us some free ways to do so. We have the Google Keyword Planner and you'll need to have a Google AdWords account which is very easy to do and I'll show you real quick how to do that. And Google Keywords Planner is a good way to get an overview of the topic and get some good keyword ideas also. There's also Google Suggested Searches, which is what they suggest to you when you're typing in a search phrase. And we also have the Google Related Searches at the bottom of a search page, which are a great way to find out what Google considers related to your main topic and to uh, come up with your silo-related topical pages for your silo. Let's go over to Google and we'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. Here we are in Google and I did a search for Heating Seattle. And just a note, I don't live in Seattle so my search results aren't skewed because I'm logged into my Gmail account. If you're logged into your Google account and you're doing searches for your local area probably especially, you might get what are called personalized results rather than the real natural results. So you'll probably want to log out of your Google account while you're doing a search. I used the uh, search tools right here, which I just typed in Seattle, Washington, which is not my hometown. And now I'm getting search results just like somebody that lived in Seattle would get. 
So down at the bottom of the page, we have some related searches to the heating Seattle search term. Eh, heat, radiant heating, air conditioning Seattle, heating repair Seattle. Now if you click on one of these related searches, so now we have heating repair Seattle as our search term, and then at the bottom of the page, we have some more related searches to the heating repair Seattle search term. So it's a good way to drill down and find out what Google considers related to your main topic and other topics on your site. Another way Google gives us is to, I'm going to take out this, and it comes up with what are called suggested searches as you're typing. So right now under Heating Seattle, we have uh, Heating Contractor Seattle, Heating Oil Company Seattle, and so on. Now say if I just put an A at the end of this, now we're going to get more suggested searches. I could put a B and we're going to get more, so you get the idea. You could also do it in front of your search term. So the suggested searches are a good way to find out what people have actually been typing into the search box on Google. And there are, are ways to automate this. There are tools that actually will do all this for you. Add all the A, B, C, D, you know, through the alphabet on the end and the beginning of the search term and make it a lot faster process so you can do some searches for that. I can, I can tell you a couple tools that I use. If you'd like, you can contact me and I'll give you my recommendations. Let's take a look at the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Now here is the, the the URL right here I found that you can get you can do a search online probably find this also to sign up for a Google AdWords account if you don't already have one you can click get started or or you can just click start now if you click get started I think you're going to have to find this little button that says start now and click on that so I'll just go ahead and click on that if you've already got a Gmail that you want to use for your AdWords account you can go ahead and type that in here and of course you just go through the process of signing up for AdWords all right, once you've created your AdWords account and logged in, you'll just click on Tools and then click on the Keyword Planner, and that will take you to this page right here. And we're just going to click on Search for New Keyword and Ad Group Ideas. We'll type in our search term, Heating Seattle, and we'll scroll down here and click Get Ideas. What pops up, first of all, is Ad Group Ideas. We want the Keyword Ideas, so we'll just click on that. And right now, the average uh, monthly searches it's going from low to high. I can click on it and it can go from high to low. We'll go back to low to high. One thing about these local search terms, Google really doesn't have very accurate figures for the amount of searches that, that they estimate for monthly searches. For instance, Heating Contractor Seattle has a really high average AdWords suggested bid price, 12, almost $13 a click, and the high competition, but it says there's only 10 searches per month. I think it's probably higher than that. Now you can download all these search terms just by clicking on download and download it as an Excel CSV file. You can also do a search for just heating by itself instead of just having Seattle in there. Click get ideas, keyword ideas. And any of these search terms that are good on a global basis, if you just add Seattle to the front or back, you know, they'll be good for a local basis also. So that's kind of a Google AdWords keyword planner in a nutshell. There's more to it than that, and you can certainly find more detailed tutorials, but that's all I'm going to go get into it in this video anyway. Right now we're going to go to a website and take a look at that internal linking and silo structuring of our content that I talked about right here. So we're going to have a home page which has the keyword of heating Seattle. We're going to have our related topic pages, water heater Seattle, furnaces Seattle, etc. And we're going to have this other stuff here, our five blog categories and blog posts. So let's go to the website. Here is our home page, heating Seattle. And in this home page, we're going to have links to all those related keyword topic pages. So we're going to have a link to all these five related topic pages. And we do. Here's our related topic page of the Water Heater Seattle, except the anchor text link is what it's called an LSI anchor text link, which means it has a similar meaning, but it's not the same exact text. So instead of saying Water Heater Seattle, I said for the anchor text link, I have new water heater for your Seattle home or business. And I did the same thing for here's our furnaces page and heat pumps, boilers, and there's the air conditioning page. For our related keyword topic pages, for instance the heat pumps page, I have an anchor text link here to the home page. I just put heating and cooling equipment in Seattle for the anchor text link. And for our furnaces page here, replace my gas furnace or my gas boiler go links to the boiler service page. Let's go to our dashboard and click on pages and we'll take a look what I'm talking about here. 
here's our heat pumps page and here is the anchor text link so what I did was uh, get whatever text I wanted as my link and I highlighted it and then I clicked on this link icon right here and then I pasted in the URL of the page I wanted to link to so the heat pumps URL I copied it right here actually copied all the links to all the different pages and put them in a text file for easy access but I just right click and copied after I highlighted it and went back here and pasted it into the URL box right here and then clicked add link and I did the same for all these other links on our heat pump Seattle page for instance right here this is the home page link heating and cooling in Seattle and so forth and I did the same thing to all these other pages also how about our blog posts here is a blog post that I made up right here let's take a look at our visual aid here okay so we need five blog categories actually first of all we'll take a look at that and these blog categories have to be very similar the same as these related keyword topics then we need a blog post in each of these blog categories for instance here's a blog post in the heat pumps ca blog category and it has a link in the content which links to this heat pump Seattle keyword topic page it doesn't link to any of these other topic pages though just to the keyword topic page which is the same as the blog category let's go to our dashboard and we'll hover over posts and click on categories here are the categories that I added here I'll delete this one and add it again and show you what I'm talking about I just typed in the name first of all heat pumps and then for the slug it's called you do it all in lowercase and you put a hyphen in between the words Then I clicked add new category and then for our blog posts here's a blog post I made and this one it's not in a category anymore because I deleted that heat pumps category but we'll take care of that we'll put it in the heat pumps category and then it has a link in the content which goes to the heat pumps page itself so that's how we do the internal linking and silo structuring of our site now if you do have any comments or questions please leave them below the video in the comment section and you can also contact me on my wphowtos.com site and send me an email and subscribe to my YouTube channels. I keep on trying to come out with more new videos for you guys. And as always, keep smiling and keep on keeping on.